OK. OK, so we are going to uh, continue our, what was that? Yes, yes, our journey. <laughs> OK, so we were discussing uh, off-shell amplitudes and uh, the data that is necessary to specify them. So uh, we were talking about, uh, OK, specifically as an example, uh, uh, the off-shell four-point amplitude of genus zero. Um, and we uh, found that this thing was specified uh, by a section, by a global section, of P04 hat, okay? So that means that uh, at every uh, point in the moduli space of the four punctured sphere, the moduli space is basically parameterized by the location of the second puncture here. For every point in the moduli space, we need to uh, specify four local coordinate maps, which uh, send uh, unit disks representing possible off-shell states into the sphere. So these, uh, these conformal maps are only uh, defined, or we will only attempt to define them up to a phase rotation, a rotation of the disk. And uh, we can do that because uh, this thing is defined on the vector space H hat, which satisfies uh, the level matching condition. So, uh, so concretely, the four-point amplitude can be written for four states, phi 1, phi 2, phi 3, and phi 4, can be written as an integral over the complex plane, or the moduli space of the four punctured sphere, of this correlation function, f1 circ phi 1 of 0, 0, and then on to f4 circ phi 4, 0, 0. And then there are some B ghosts. which are needed to uh, complete the definition of the measure. OK. So in, in particular, uh, so in principle, we could just put anything in here we want, you know, with some dz and dz bar and integrate it, and we would have something. But uh, the important point is that we need to choose uh, B ghosts um, so we have to choose the measure such that the off-shell amplitude is BRST invariant. So this is where we impose the condition of BRST invariance. So for an arbitrary choice of measure here, we won't have BRST invariance off shell, okay? But now we want BRST invariance off shell, so we have to choose these B ghosts in a particular way. So on shell, what we could do, okay, if you remember, for the on shell amplitude, essentially uh, all we had to do to get the correct measure was to act B minus one, B bar minus one on the second puncture. Okay, so that was fairly simple. And the reason why uh, this made why this worked 
is because on shell, the only dependence of the integrand on the moduli space, or on Z, appeared through the location of the second puncture. Okay? But now, uh, these uh, conformal maps, F1 through F4, will all depend on the modulus Z. Okay? So, as a matter of principle, they can depend on it, but you, in fact, can see that they must depend on it because if you approach certain corners of moduli space, for example, if you take uh, the second puncture and you bring it close to the first puncture, these circles will have to adjust their shape to avoid overlapping. So you can see that F1 through F4 must be functions of Z. Okay? So, uh, the local coordinate maps must depend on Z. Okay? So that means that uh, we will have to uh, insert the B-ghosts in such a way as to uh, reflect this additional dependence on Z that you have off shell. Okay. So the uh, um, so the essential point is that you want some uh, formula which relates the exterior derivative of one of these conformal maps acting on one of the vertex operators. to some insertion of the energy momentum tensor. Okay, so you'll write this as dz um, fa circ uh, um, t of vza. I'll explain the notation in a moment. Acting on Actually, I think I, by convention, there needs to be a minus sign here. So this is essentially a formula which will allow us to turn uh, the BRST operator acting on a B ghost into an exterior derivative. Okay, so no. Okay, so let me let me define this uh, T of V. So this is some notation. This is defined as contour integral around the uh, origin, in this case, uh, d xi over 2 pi i, v of xi, uh, t of xi, plus uh, integral around the origin, the anti-holomorphic coordinate. the anti-holomorphic analog of the energy momentum tensor, okay, where this V of xi is uh, analytic near, okay, basically near the unit circle. Okay. So this object V of xi, okay, so, okay, particularly in this context, okay, so we have some labels here. So there's a V now for every uh, puncture, so A can go from one to four. Okay, so we have uh, 
a, a set of these V of Zs, V of Z, V A of Z bar. So these objects, which appear here, are called Schiffer vector fields. Okay, so, uh, so, so two comments. First, V of Z bar, V Z bar, and V Z are not complex conjugate to each other. Okay, so they're in principle totally independent fields. Um, and uh, another comment is that these vector fields are actually components of a one form in moduli space. Okay, so uh, you could see that this VAZ goes with DZ, and this VAZ bar goes with DZ bar. So really, these guys are components of a one form. But nevertheless, they're called vector fields, since, uh, OK, not from the point of view of the moduli space, but from the point of view of the local coordinate xi around the puncture, they transform as a vector field under conformal transformation. So these things are vector fields in the coordinate xi, but they are components of a one form on the moduli space. What? D, D is exterior derivative. T, yes, T is the uh, energy momentum tensor. Okay, the, the full energy momentum tensor of your conformal field theory. Yeah, so basically what this means is that you do this contour integral of this, uh, of this particular, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, you do the contour integral around phi A, okay, of T of xi, weighted by this vector field V of xi, okay, and also the anti-holomorphic. Uh, yeah, yes, and you, you pick out the pole. Okay, and uh, okay, depending on what kind of operator phi, this could be very complicated, and, and the result could involve many derivatives of V. <laughs> yes, yes. What? Yes, though so this is the definition of our Schiffer vector fields. So, okay, so the point is that we want to implement a uh, shift in the moduli space, okay, through some conformal transformation, okay, through some infinitesimal conformal transformation. And the required infinitesimal conformal transformation to shift in the moduli space will be defined by these Schiffer vector fields. So in particular, these Schiffer vector fields should be, uh, should be determined entirely by these local coordinate maps FA. So, so we, we will show how to find them in a moment. Yes, it's the exterior derivative on the moduli space. Yes, so later we will actually view it as an exterior derivative on this bundle, okay, but uh, you can pull it back. But uh, we will assume for the moment that we've chosen some vector, some section of this bundle, and we can, uh, okay, take the pullback of the differential forms on the uh, on P04, and then we're interested in the exterior derivative on the moduli space. So, um, okay, so now, so now we will. Uh, try to uh, solve for these Schiffer vector fields. So uh, in order to do that, uh, okay, so, so we will, uh, okay, <laughs> so 
how do I how do I write this? So let's uh, let's focus on on the dz component of this equation. So the dz bar component is completely analogous, and we will write uh, d by dz f a circ phi a of zero zero. We will write it as uh, f a circ phi a of zero zero at z plus epsilon z bar, okay, minus, it's just a definition of derivative, <laughs> okay. Over epsilon, okay. And we take epsilon to be infinitesimal, and then we, uh, okay, then the dz component of this equation implies that, uh, uh, implies that uh, F A circ phi A of zero, zero, evaluated at Z plus epsilon Z bar. Note this thing is not necessarily uh, depending on Z holomorphically, so uh, the variation with the, of the holomorphic coordinate and the anti-holomorphic coordinate are independent, which is why v of z and v of z bar, v of z bar are independent. So this thing will now equal f a circ uh, this operator, one minus epsilon t v z a. acting on phi a, zero, zero, evaluated at z and z bar, okay? So, uh, okay, so now, uh, so now we have this uh, combination of the, uh, okay, we have this uh, operator acting on phi a of zero and zero. So the claim is that this operator implements an infinitesimal conformal transformation. So one minus epsilon T V Z A acting on phi A of zero zero will equal one minus epsilon V A Z the conformal transformation phi a zero zero and where the identity conformal transformation here the identity conformal map is just uh, okay so now I will just leave it as an exercise uh, to prove this Is the claim clear? What is what is this? Okay. Uh, okay. So. Okay. So this, so now we're computing this object here. Okay. So that's this uh, this operator acting, okay, acting on our vertex operator, and the claim is just that if you do this contour integral of the energy momentum tensor around phi a, and you compute this thing, this thing is identical to an infinitesimal coordinate transformation generated by this vector field v. Okay, so this is, uh, okay, this is, uh, um, this is not difficult to prove, but uh, okay, so but many people might not be used to thinking about such things. No. So this, this holds for an arbitrary uh, 
operator or state. What? This equation? This, this equation. Uh, yeah, so maybe I should say z, z bar, z, z bar. Is this, uh, was this your question? Here, the left-hand side is evaluated at z plus epsilon, okay. So, uh, well, okay, so, <laughs> yeah, so, okay, what I did was I took this equation, okay, looked at the dz component, substituted this formula for the derivative, okay, and, uh, and then just realized that, uh, the statement can be uh, rephrased in this way for the dz component. And then I'm claiming that uh, if you compute this operator acting on phi a, it's just an infinitesimal conformal transformation of phi a. So this is what the energy momentum tensor does. It's a generator of infinitesimal, co of infinitesimal conformal transformations. This is the inf Yes. Well, okay, for you this might be trivial, but for, okay, you actually, you actually... just how you practically implement Yes, but I challenge you to prove this. You know how to compute this side, right? Yes, I have to compute No. Compute this side, okay? And compute this side. Are they the same? Okay. You don't have to know the energy momentum tensor. For example, but uh, but you can actually. Well, uh, you can uh, compute it even if phi is not primary. So that's part of the little challenge. <laughs> okay, so okay, so you can prove that. So you know that there, even for non-primary operators, there's some conformal transformation that acts on them. And in principle, it's just a question of uh, the transformation properties of a conf conformal field and not, you don't need to think about energy momentum tensor, right? What? It's a word identity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, um, okay. So, so now suppose that uh, you believe that this equation holds. Okay. Well, then we uh, then uh, plugging back into this equation. This implies that the conformal map. F A, Xi A, Z plus Epsilon, Z bar, should be equal to F A composed with this uh, conformal transformation, Xi A minus Epsilon V A Z, Xi A Z, Z bar, Z, Z bar, okay. So now epsilon is infinitesimal and you can use this equation to solve for the Schiffer vector field and you find that V, Z, A, of oh, Xi, A, Z, Z bar equals minus partial derivative of F, A, um, with respect to, this is, I think it's, okay, it appears upstairs, with respect to Z times partial derivative F A with
with respect to xi a inverse. Okay. So these, this is the uh, this is the uh, Schiffer vector field, which must appear in this equation. Okay. But any questions? How we got to this, for example? Okay. Okay. So. So this Schiffer vector field will tell us what the B ghosts need to be, in order to have a measure consistent with BRST invariance for off-shell amplitude. So this thing is kind of, uh, okay, it's kind of, you could formulate this uh, in another way in terms of uh, Beltrami differentials, but this Schiffer variation language is uh, kind of standard in the context of string field theory. Well, maybe I can here. Yeah, slight a slight change of the uh, of the conformal maps. So if you if you deform the uh, the uh, the local coordinate maps, then uh, so, yeah. So this tells you how to deform the local coordinate maps in such a way that you move in the moduli space. Okay. Yes, okay, but the maps are acting on the states, so. So saying that the maps are changing is the same as saying that the states are changing because the maps are acting on the states. But you can, for, so you can forget about the states and you can just uh, think, about, think about it in terms of a change of the map. So you have, you're trying to change the map in such a way that, uh, that you move in the moduli space. Okay, so uh, so let's uh, so next step we're going to introduce some notation. Okay, so this is just to simplify our description of the measure. So we're so so given a point in this uh, in this uh, fiber bundle B zero four. We can define a state, which is an example of a surface state, what's called a surface state. Okay. So a surface state, we write it as, uh, uh, as sigma zero four, which is a map from H tensor four to H tensor zero, which is defined by okay. Or maybe I can uh, write this as <laughs> be more efficient, so I don't have to write this out. which is defined by a correlation function on the complex plane with the conformal maps F1 through F4, inserting our states. Okay. So this is uh, what we will say defines a surface state. So we just take a surface defined by, okay, actually here we don't need the hat, okay. Okay, so we just take a surface defined by certain moduli in certain 
local coordinates around these moduli, and we just, the surface state is defined by the correlation function defined by this data. A1 through A4 are states on this side, and here they're the corresponding yeah. vertex operators. A1, okay, so this state A1 is A1 of 0, 0 acting on vacuum. This is a state operator map. So I'm kind of assuming this. So this is not, not any different than equations we've written many times before. Uh, uh, yes, it, it, okay, it means, uh, okay, a point in the moduli space of the four punctured sphere together with uh, local coordinates around each of the punctures. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay, but in principle, if we choose a, a section of P04 or a global section of P hat 04, and we consider only level match states, then we would have a family of surface states for each point in the moduli space. Okay, but a priori, the surface state itself, uh, okay, is, you, is given uh, just with some point, okay, in P04. Okay. Um, so now, okay, so, so now we note that the surface state is BRST invariant. Okay. No. This is just a, a pure surface state. So the only thing that's in this correlation function are the vertex operators of the state that you are uh, probing it with. So another way of saying is that, uh, okay, surface state, you can draw a picture of a sphere, and we've removed four holes from the sphere. Okay. Okay. And we're evaluating this path integral on the sphere. Okay, so there are no insertions in this sphere, but this path integral will define a functional of the boundary conditions that we impose on these holes. So this functional of these boundary conditions is the surface state. Okay? Yes? This is the region vertex. Yeah. Uh, which one is that? Yes. So it's a, it's a SL two C vertex, right? Are they are they are the disks overlapping? There probably are. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's a little, it, yeah, it doesn't work. So, Yes, sounds similar. 
Have I looked at them personally? Uh, maybe, but maybe I've forgotten. <laughs> okay, I, yes, but I think these, these ideas are, uh, are definitely around, okay, since a long time. Uh, Yes. So it's probably it sounds like it's the correct way of thinking. Okay. Uh, so it's prob we're probably talking about the same thing. Okay. Right now we're not specifying any particular f's. Okay. Except that they should not overlap these. Uh, so. So this is a surface state, okay, is the concept clear? So our off -shell, it's clear that our off-shell amplitude is built from this surface state, okay? Only thing we have to do is we have to insert B ghosts, okay, okay, which will be defined by the Schiffer vector fields around these punctures, and we have to integrate over the moduli space, okay? But before we do that, the primitive notion is the surface state, okay? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, uh, so, okay, so, the next uh, bit of notation is uh, is introducing an operator valued one form on the moduli space, which I will just write as T. Okay. So this thing is basically the energy momentum tensor times the uh, the one form basis one forms in the moduli space. So, uh, especially it's dz t of vz1 plus dz bar t of uh, vz bar 1, okay, tensor one, two, three, and then plus, etc. And then we, we shift the, uh, the arguments. One tensor, three tensor, dz, uh, dz four, okay, plus dz rt. Z4. Okay. So we introduce this operator value one form. And provided uh, that, uh, that these guys are the Schiffer vector fields that we've just calculated, we have the relation D sigma zero four exterior derivative of this surface state is given by minus the surface state sigma zero four times this uh, operator t is this clear this statement okay you can convince this is just notation but uh, uh, this is convenient so in particular because uh, the surface state is BRST invariant, this implies Okay, so this is exactly the kind of formula that we want. We have Q acting on a form in the moduli space being converted into an exterior derivative on the moduli space. 
Okay, oh, and B is basically the same as T with the energy momentum tensor replaced by B ghost. So that is, uh, is that clear? Yes. Yeah, so Q annihilates this thing, so you can replace this with a commutator with B, which converts the B ghost into energy momentum tensor, and then the energy momentum tensor acting on this surface state. So this basically inserts, uh, 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 these things, I'm not sure. I, okay, <laughs> basically inserts the uh, these charges. Okay, around each puncture. Okay, multiplied by the appropriate one form, and then these uh, energy momentum contours just compute the derivative on the moduli space, and then we get uh, the exterior derivative. Okay. Okay. So, so we're almost there. Um, but, uh, okay, so this object here defines a one form on the moduli space, and we need a two form in order to give a measure, right, because the moduli space is two dimensional. Okay, so, um, so this is not quite the measure we want yet. But uh, the remedy is pretty simple. We just take the measure to be, uh, to be. We just multiply by another B ghost. So, so it turns out that okay, you could show that sigma zero four with B squared over two factorial, and you operate on this with Q with a minus sign. This is equal to D of this thing with one B, okay? So therefore, we can define our off-shell amplitude, four-point amplitude. B squared is this, no, it's a commu effectively commuting because DZ is anti-commuting. So you have a product of two anti-commuting objects. So B is, B is effectively a commuting operator because it's the B ghost, which is anti-commuting, times DZ, which is also anti-commuting. Okay? So you have something that's even in the end. Okay, I think, uh, yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah, so, okay, uh, we, we could talk about that later, but, okay, so it, it's clear that what I'm, what I'm writing here, okay, I hope. So then we find that the off-shell four-point amplitude is given by, okay, a choice of section of p hat zero four, okay, and once we've specified that section, we have a surface state, sigma zero four, and then we just take b squared over two factorial, and this is our off-shell point, four-point amplitude. So now, okay, you act Q on this side, and then by this equation, you get an exterior derivative uh, here, and then by evaluating the integral, you get contributions from the boundary of moduli space, which we ignore, okay, so therefore, Okay, we have satisfied all of our conditions one through three that we outlined at the beginning. So the, off, so the amplitude is defined on a space which is as big as possible. Uh, it generalizes the on-shell four-point amplitude, and it's BRST invariant.
Okay, so um, leave this as an exercise. Is to show that uh, this uh, this off-shell amplitude we've computed, acting on HQ, that is on physical, on BRST invariant conformal vertex operators, uh, gives uh, the familiar. On shell result. Okay. So, are there any questions? Okay. What was that? Why is it the same? Well, because we want the commutator of Q with this object to give you the energy momentum tensor. Okay, same, maybe a same. <laughs> okay, it's basically B is given by this expression where we replace T with, so it's not the same as this expression. Okay, it's a, uh, okay. Okay, we could say replace. <laughs> okay. Uh, T with B. I'm sorry if this not being clear. Okay. So I just didn't want to write that equation again. Um, okay. Any other questions? So now we're, uh, okay, so now we haven't gotten very far. We've just gotten the uh, off-shell four-point amplitude. Uh, but now it's pretty clear how to uh, generalize this to an arbitrary off-shell amplitude. Okay, so um, okay, so for an arbitrary amplitude, okay, Okay, we have the moduli space of, uh, of uh, genus G Riemann surfaces with n punctures. And then we have a decorated version of this, which is uh, P, uh, so arbitrary. So, uh, okay, so at genus G and with N punctures, we have the fiber bundle, PGN. And this is, uh, okay, this is uh, a fiber bundle whose uh, base is the moduli space of genus G Riemann surfaces with N punctures, and, uh, and whose fiber con uh, consists of the possible ways of choosing uh, local coordinates around each of those punctures, okay? So if we, uh, if we require that, uh, that local coordinates are, okay, equivalent, if they, uh, if they differ by rotations, of the disk, then this defines p hat g n, okay? So p hat g n is uh, p g n where we forget uh, about, uh, okay, an overall rotation of these disks, okay? So the off-shell amplitude will be defined given a global section of p hat g n, okay? So uh, the amplitude is defined AGN okay. on this uh, subspace H hat 
uh, where each hat satisfies B0 minus and level matching conditions. Okay, just in the same way as uh, we had for um, at four points. Okay, so so now given so given uh, okay okay so let me move on to another blackboard. So given a point, P in, uh, in uh, PGN, we have a surface state. Sigma G N, okay, the surface state sigma G N. Okay, so this surface state is basically defined by a path integral on the genus G Riemann surface. Okay, say three is enough. Okay with n holes removed, n holes removed, okay? Okay, four, <laughs> let's take four removes, four holes out, okay? And we remove these four holes, and uh, this defines, and we do the path integral, this defines some functional of the, uh, of the, uh, of these boundary conditions, and this defines the surface state given a point in PGN, okay, and uh, so if we introduce, um, so next, what we have to do is we have to, uh, okay, so let P alpha be coordinates, some coordinate system on P, G, N, okay? So this index alpha is the index of our coordinates, but it will take an infinite number of uh, values because uh, this fiber bundle, uh, the fiber, is infinite dimensional. But nevertheless, we can formally talk about a coordinate system on PGN. Some will, okay, yeah, so, uh, okay, a few will be the moduli, you know, so, <laughs> yes, and then uh, the rest will be just, uh, yeah. Okay. And then we define uh, our Schiffer vector fields, okay, by this formula. So we take the partial derivative with respect to P alpha, sigma uh, G N, and this should be equal to um, sigma G N with uh, with energy momentum tensor operators, okay, V1 alpha tensor, tensor N minus one plus, etc. cetera, plus one tensor N minus one uh, tensor T V alpha 
n, okay? And these, these uh, things which are entering into t, these are our Schiffer vector fields. Okay, so now, so now multiplying by uh, basis one form, dp alpha, and then summing over alpha, this relation is just d sigma g n equals Actually, I think I needed a minus sign in here. It's a kind of annoying convention, but uh, seems to be there. <laughs> Sigma g n t, okay? Where now t is given by just this thing, and you sum multiplied by dp alpha and sum over alpha, okay? So this is exactly the same as we saw um, earlier with uh, the four-point amplitude. Yes. Yeah, so I'm taking it, I'm being, I'm, yeah, so now D is the exterior derivative on P, G, N, okay, but we can pull it back to the moduli space if, if we have chosen a section, okay? So now I'm being a little bit, uh, okay, it's important for me to emphasize, I'm being a little bit more abstract now. So now I'm just writing this equation without committing to a choice of section, okay? We only have to commit to the choice of section at the very end by pulling back the differential forms onto our choice of section of BGN, okay? Yes. Yeah, so in principle, you, you, okay. We're not trying to integrate, this is not the measure yet, right? So we, we can discuss integration over the mod, over PGN once we have a measure, okay? Um, uh, okay. So we have this equation, which holds, okay, with slight generalization in that we're talking about this equation now is claimed to hold on PGN and not just on, on the pullback onto MGN. Okay, so now, okay, now we, if we act again with the exterior derivative, we find an interesting fact. So acting D here, we get zero, but acting D here, okay, well D first acts on the surface state, but it also acts on T, okay? So we learn an interesting fact, that the exterior derivative of T is equal to T squared. Okay? Okay. Now we introduce, uh, okay, now we introduce the analogous operator, uh, operator valued one form, B, which satisfies uh, uh, B, Q equals T. It's basically the same as what we had here, just replace, uh, okay, T with B <laughs> again, okay. So note that uh, B, uh, somewhat counterintuitively, is even, is an even object, okay, but T is odd. It's an odd object, 
does uh, T has a commuting energy momentum tensor multiplied by an anti-commuting one form on PGN, and this has the anti-commuting B ghost multiplied by the anti-commuting one form on PGN. So in total, this thing is even, but this is odd. Okay. Yes, so it's important that, the, okay, so T is odd, okay, 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 but T squared, T squared is not uh, zero because the energy momentum tensor has non-trivial OPE with itself. So, so the Virasoro algebra is not, uh, is not uh, abelian, right? And so because of this, uh, okay, we have some anti-symmetrization here, but that just computes commutators of, of the Ursera generators. And uh, so this, uh, this equation. Yeah, so this is, this is almost, yeah, so this is basically my Cartan equation. This? So, okay, so this is an, a, a, a little bit of a subtlety. Um, so, I would say that you should say this equation can be chosen to hold, okay, uh, acting on any states, okay. But in fact, uh, this equation doesn't define T uniquely, okay. So, it turns out that you can add to T um, certain contributions which annihilate sigma gn, okay? So these, okay, are known in string field theory community as Virasoro conservation laws. So it turns out, for example, if, if, you, uh, if you have a T, which is defined by a Schiffer vector, vec a Schiffer vector field, which is holomorphic over the entire Riemann surface minus the, the, the disks, okay? then this will annihilate the surface state, okay? So uh, there's somehow an equivalence relation. <laughs> so there's some ambiguity in defining what this T actually is because, uh, okay, but if you choose this T appropriately, okay, so this equation certainly holds contracted with uh, sigma gn, and uh, I guess you could say it uh, holds for, for uh, <laughs> if you, uh, if you, uh, um, if you, uh, don't add uh, trivial terms that uh, that don't affect that don't move you on PGN. Right. So this this is basically saying that what this is saying is that the uh, the exterior derivative of the Schiffer vector field is given by. Uh, the Lie bracket. So the exterior derivative on the moduli space is given by the Lie bracket of the vector fields uh, in. Okay. Uh, yes. 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 Uh, so, uh, okay, so, so now we introduce a corresponding uh, operator B, which is even, but it's made of the B ghost. And uh, because uh, commutators of B with the energy momentum tensor are the same as commutators of energy momentum tensor with itself, it's easy to convince yourself that, uh, that this object B satisfies DB equals uh, one half. Okay, now let me make sure I get the sign. Oh, I don't remember. One half T with B. Okay. So, okay, so given uh, this data, we can define a measure for integration on uh, PGN, okay, okay, well, yeah, okay, yeah, so actually we're only going to be in integrate, interested in uh, in uh, level match states, so we, so we have, uh, so we will consider this as a measure of p hat g n. So this measure, 
you could write is mega GN, which is a map from uh, H tensor N into H C zero. Okay. Which is given by the following formula. Okay. Um, there's some prefactor. I'll explain it in a moment, or <laughs> not explain it in a moment. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, and uh, it's just given by sigma gn, by taking our surface state sigma gn, and then multiplying by e to the b. Okay? So this is our measure on the moduli uh, on pgn. Okay? And uh, I will leave it as an exercise, which is kind of a fun little little piece of algebra. Okay. Okay. To show that uh, omega g n, if you act q on omega g n. And this is equal to, I think it's a minus, yes, there's still that minus sign, omega gn, or minus, okay. Okay, so this is, uh, this is a nice exercise. And, uh, okay, this is, uh, this is often referred to in string field theory literature as the BRST identity. Okay. And it's the thing that allows you to turn the BRST operator into a, uh, into a total derivative on the moduli space. Okay. So with this data, then, uh, then our off-shell AGN, our off-shell amplitude, is just given by integrating this form over some section of P hat GN of the measure. So this is, uh, this is our formula for the amplitude, and uh, it's BRST invariant and satisfies all the conditions we want. So uh, some few other comments. So we had this normalization constant here, okay. So this thing is just there for a matter of convenience in string field theory. It's just a convenient normalization to have. So it's just a matter of convention in some sense, but it's a convenient convention in string field theory. Um, the other thing I should not mention is that this measure is a form of inhomogeneous degree, okay? Because B is a one form on the moduli space, and we take E to the B, and we have, uh, okay, okay. In particular, since, uh, uh, since PGN is uh, infinite dimensional, there's no top degree form, okay? So this, uh, this different form goes on to infinity. Uh, but, uh, okay, if we uh, integrate it over a section of p hat gn, then we s select the form of uh, the physical top degree form on the moduli space, effectively. And, uh, and then we don't have to worry about the higher pieces. And, uh, and this gives us our amplitude. Uh-huh. 
Yes. 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 Okay. Yes, so I don't claim to have solved this problem. So in this sense, it's a little bit formal. So that's one, <laughs> okay, but I'm not, this is uh, not, not easy uh, to... Uh, Yes, yes. And okay, yes, okay. And then uh, his, his, his amplitude that you define depends on the section that you choose, right? Yes. It depends on the section. Yes, okay, unless you're, you're considering on shell states. Right. Okay. So for off shell states, it depends on this section. Uh, on the section you choose. Yes, yes. Okay, in principle, one can also, because we have a, a complete measure on p hat gn, we can think of integrating it over submanifolds or integration cycles yeah, of arbitrary dimension. Uh, <laughs> okay, but uh, I don't know if this has any physical interpretation. Um, but it, our formalism allows, this formalism allows us to discuss such things in principle. <laughs> Yes, but uh, the, if, you, if you integrate over all possible sections, then you will have an infinite number of B ghosts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? <laughs> and then you will have to uh, probe it with uh, states with an infinite number of C ghosts. Uh, okay, and it's a little... Not really. So... Okay. So, um, okay, so I have 15 minutes left. So now we finally uh, finished talking about off-shell amplitudes. Okay. So now we're going to start talking about uh, <laughs> start moving a little bit closer to closed string field theory. Okay. So. Um, So now we're going to talk about off-shell amplitudes. Uh, okay. So we've defined a uh, rather generic class of off-shell amplitudes. But the off-shell amplitudes that appear in closed string field theory are of a special kind that appear from a Feynman graph expansion. Okay? So, um, okay, so in principle, uh, okay, we could uh, start from the beginning from, uh, from closed string field theory action and then uh, compute the Feynman graph expansion and then derive the appropriate off-shell amplitudes, but since we don't really uh, know the form of the action, or at least uh, we're trying to motivate the form of the action, it's actually easier to go the other way around. So uh, that means that uh, uh, what we will do is we will just guess a natural form for a cubic vertex and a uh, natural form for the propagator, and then we will start building Feynman diagrams, okay? And then we will use these Feynman diagrams to infer the form of the action that they derive from. Okay, so, so the first step
is to, uh, is to find a propagator and cubic vertex. And then by gluing these things, we will generate some off-shell amplitudes. And then we can use this to infer the form of the action. Okay, so uh, okay, so now uh, okay, so so let's start with the propagator. Okay. So a propagator, you can visualize it as a tube of world sheet, okay? Okay. So uh, this tube has some length s, okay? And, uh, and uh, the tube can also twist so that if we start with, uh, with a point here, Okay, at the end of the tube, it can move here at some angle theta. Okay. So the propagator is defined by a uh, a uh, closed string surface, which is uh, which is uh, which uh, propagates and twists. Okay. So. Um, so what we mean specifically by this is that, okay, so, so S and theta are coordinates on a portion of, uh, the, of, of the moduli space. Where, uh, okay, where we have uh, this Feynman diagram. Okay, so, uh, okay, so in, in principle, this propagator will appear inside of a uh, it will appear connecting all kinds of vertices, okay, in some Feynman diagram, and S and theta will be coordinates on some portion of the moduli space covered by this diagram, okay? So, um, and what? As I'm kind of, <laughs> I don't think that can happen. No. Usually, uh, for on-shell states, if you connect them with a propagator, they will, you will get a divergence. So a a zero two in some sense is the uh, kinetic term of the action. And this is the inverse of the kinetic terms. Yes. So, if you apply to a CO2 like object, you get one. I guess yes. If if you if you are uh, with the appropriate class of states, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're not on shell or something, <laughs> okay. So uh, a propagator inverts Q. Okay, but. Uh, only up to uh, the boundary, <laughs> okay, only up to states that are on shell. Okay, so, okay, so the point is that because S and theta are coordinates on the moduli space, since we have to integrate over the moduli space, uh, we need to integrate over S and theta. So, um, so in the actual propagator, it will, in, in fact, be a linear combination of these tubes, 
uh, or a continuous linear combination of these tubes where we're integrating over their length and their twist angle. Okay. Okay, so um, let's see what. Okay, so uh, so what does this uh, surface mean, really? So if we uh, attach such a surface to a state, okay, this is uh, this is equivalent to uh, acting on the state with the operator e to the minus s l zero plus, and then e to the i theta l zero minus. So if we have some acting on some state phi, okay. So uh, so where L zero plus or minus equals L zero plus minus L zero bar. Okay. So so attaching uh, so attaching this uh, cylinder to a state is basically the same thing as multiplying. By uh, by this operator, so uh, so this is also um, equivalent to a conformal transformation of this state. Uh, maybe I should. Okay. Zero bar by. E to the minus s plus i theta phi. Okay, so so now, okay, so now if we visualize this equation in the unit disk, on the unit disk, what this conformal transformation amounts to is you start with your unit disk of your state with the vertex operator at the origin, okay? And the conformal transformation by e to the minus s plus i theta, okay? Amounts to, okay, since this s has to be greater than zero, it will shrink this disk, okay? And it will rotate it by some angle, okay, theta, okay. So, uh, so this disk gets mapped into here, and then we have some empty region here uh, between this uh, shrunk disk and the unit disk and the unit circle, and this region in this conformal frame is what is is the region of our propagator. So this is basically uh, this tube expressed in the conformal frame of, uh, of radial quantization. So is this clear? Okay. Just trying to give you some uh, intuition for what this propagator is. So, okay, as I was saying, okay, okay, the propagator is given by attaching these tubes to a, uh, this tube to a state and then integrating over theta and s as part of our integration over the moduli space. And we have to uh, find the right measure. We have to insert the, uh, the correct B ghosts. And if you do that, Okay, you find that this is uh, this is the uh, this is the form of the propagator.
Okay, so uh, so this is uh, this is our propagator. And this can be written, okay, in the following form. Okay, so uh, so this one over L zero plus, okay, L zero plus is basically uh, this one over L zero plus is basically the uh, analog of the one over p squared plus m squared you're used to seeing in a propagator. So L zero plus is basically the kinetic operator for the string. Okay. So this one over L zero plus gives it arises from performing this integral over S. Okay. And then we can also perform this integral over theta. And this introduces some additional operator delta delta L zero minus here. Yes, it's a discrete delta. Yes. So in fact this thing is a projector. <laughs> so this thing is the projector onto states, onto level match states. So its uh, presence is, is really uh, quite novel from the point of view of quantum field theory. So in quantum field theory, you basically have an analog of this factor, one over L zero plus, but not of this factor, okay? So this factor appears because the closed string is not a particle. So it has an additional modulus internal, basically, to the closed string, which allows you to rotate it around the circle. And when we uh, define the propagator, we have to account for the fact that the, that the closed string might not only just move forward in time, but it might also twist, okay? So this uh, extra twist action is not something that you have in ordinary quantum field theory. So uh, the propagator is a little bit um, is a little bit different from uh, from what you might expect. Okay. Okay, and then you have uh, this b zero plus and b zero minus. This is not true in open. In open, you you don't have this factor. Okay. Okay. So we also have these B ghosts. Okay, which are there because well, we are integrating over two moduli. Okay. So the B ghosts are there to ensure okay BRST invariance of the propagator in the sense that if you compute Q with the propagator. You find, okay, L zero minus is equal to. So, uh, so this factor, in fact, you can tell is identically BRST invariant. So, uh, so you get no boundary terms from this contribution, but uh, you get something from here. So well, this is one minus e to the minus infinity L zero plus if you compute. Uh, so this e to the minus infinity L zero plus, okay, represents an infinitely long tube of world sheet, okay. And this is about, this represents the boundary of moduli space, okay. It's basically, okay where you have some degeneration of your Riemann surface. So the degeneration of the surface uh, will be completely contained in the, in the, in the propagator, okay? So uh, if we ignore boundary, if we ignore contributions from the boundary moduli space, okay, this term is supposed to vanish, okay? Okay, and then there's this term which comes from another boundary, okay? But this bound, this is uh, this is not the boundary of the moduli space. It's a boundary of a region interior. Uh, it's an interior boundary of the moduli space, and it's the 
it's the edge of the region in the moduli space which is covered by these coordinates uh, of the propagator. So this is uh, this is represents a true boundary. And this part will represent a, uh, a, some interior uh, interior uh, I don't want to say interior boundary. Okay. So it's the boundary of the uh, region of the moduli space which is covered by these propagator coordinates. So in this sense, uh, these uh, B0 plus and B0 minus, you can immediately see that they are the right things that you need to have the measure for the integration over the moduli space of this propagator. So now, okay, now I think I'm a little bit over time, so I think uh, we can 